Okay, I know we're moving later into the section. We're approaching what we would think are as harder questions. And I think that the reason this one is, is hard is it feels kind of like we're getting a lot of information, right? We have this scatter plot. So we have the, the line of best fit, which is obviously the line, and we have all these dots around it. Now the dots don't matter, they're not asking for those. And what a lot of people do here is they, they hear, okay, I need to get the slope, and they've memorized that something like y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2 gives us the slope. And then they start picking some dots that they like, maybe dots that are close to the line, and actually doing calculations to find the slope. I do not recommend that. The, the answer choices are way too different for the actual calculation to matter. We can estimate here. And this is very common on the SAT and, and why we need to remember it's a multiple choice test. We don't need to solve everything the way your math teacher would make you solve it in school. We can just kind of look at it and sometimes at least eliminate some answers very easily. Here, what do we know right away about this line just by looking at it? What is its slope? Well, it's a negative slope, right? It's going down. So that gets rid of A and B. And, and they're just like that, we're down to a 50-50 shot. So great. Now, in terms of figuring out what the actual slope is, here's what I would do. Um, I would look at the one that makes more sense to me, which is D. And remember with slope, even if we're not using this equation, we have to remember that there's, it's, it's a fraction, right? There's a top and there's a bottom, right? There's, a, there's always two parts to a slope if we want there to be. So we can do the same thing with choice D. We can turn it into a top, negative seven, and a bottom, one. And now what we have is the change in Y over the change in X. Sometimes that a triangle is used to represent the idea of change. So let's just test that out, right? Let's start at our Y intercept, which is up here at eight. And the change in Y is negative, so it's down seven. So we go down seven, so that would get us to one. And then it's over one to the right one, which would put us right here. Now, does that look like the slope? No, right? If I connect those dots, this is a much, ooh, I'm not even doing it well. Let me try that again. <laughs> it would be here, something like this, right? That's a much, much steeper slope. So negative seven, one, you know, it, it's just way off, right? So I don't need to test out C. I've tested out the thing that was easier to think about because it didn't involve any decimals, and it's right. So that's it, that's all I would do. If we wanted to do it very quickly, we could also focus on the fact that, that this point here, 10, zero, is kind of a nice point. So we could plug in, this was zero, eight. So change in Y over change in X, eight minus zero over zero minus 10 is um, uh, eight, uh, oh, sorry, sorry, ooh, boy, that was a mistake. So this is why I don't like the formula, right? 10, it's 10, one. So uh, 10, one gives me, eight minus one, which is seven, over zero minus 10, which is negative 10, which if we put that in the calculator is negative 0.7. So it works out nicely. But again, notice how quickly I, my mind kind of went to the thing that just felt right, right? I mean, there's, there's, that's how this works is, is our brain, there's math that our brain wants to do naturally because it's, uh, it's easier, but it's not always right. And so in this case, I made it a zero because zero in my mind was a little bit easier. I didn't even realize it until I was doing the work and showing it on the page. But also, I think the fact that it's zero minus 10 is what causes a lot of trouble, is we really wanna do subtraction that does not result in negative numbers. Our brain really likes it to just be 10 minus zero. So this is the most common mistake with the slope formula is those negatives kind of make us rearrange the, the points in a way that doesn't the formula, but it produces nicer numbers. And if we did that here, what would we get? We would get seven over positive 10. We get 0.7, which is choice B. So we might think we've done everything correctly because we have this very clear answer and it's one of the answer choices, but we lost a negative, we made a mistake. And so I'll leave you just on this. Whenever you get to any question on the SAT math, look at all the answer choices before you start solving. Just give them a glance. What seems to matter? What seems to be changing? If it's something like this, where if we lose a negative, we have two answers that could be right, well, then we gotta make sure when we're doing the work, we don't lose the negatives, right? So sometimes the answer choices can show you what to care about as you do the work of the question. But from the start, I would not have done the slope formula here. Just look at it, use some process elimination, count some boxes, the scale is fine, and then you can use process elimination to get the right answer, choice C.